to break up the conversation, but good afternoon, and I'd like to welcome everybody to our council meeting this afternoon. This is a, a little unusual. This is the second time we met in this format, and this council meeting, we have a, a short council meeting followed by a budget workshop, and this council meeting will, will take um, the place of our Monday council meeting. And today we have an invocation by Councilman John Roberts, and I will lead us in respect to the flags. Please rise. Heavenly Father, as we gather today to discuss and vote on the needs of our city and its residents, I ask for your guidance that the decisions we make will be beneficial to the greater good of all of our citizens and our community that we may rally together and not allow barriers, beliefs, and personal agendas to cloud the direction you wish us to take. Also, Lord, as our city, state, country, and world continue to deal with this ongoing virus crisis that has affected each and every one of us, I ask for you to lay your healing hand on us all. We do not know what you have in store for our future, but trust that we will humbly accept your will to be done. Please, Father, continue to bless those that are most directly assisting us through this crisis our first responders, doctors, nurses, and caregivers, as they place themselves in harm's way each and every day to protect us all. These things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks, John, for those words about, um, especially on the coronavirus. And I know we all have thought this. I'm really proud of David and his team for what they've done in the community's response to this virus. And I'm convinced it might be a little different, but we'll come out strong on the end. The minutes of the April 12th, 27th meeting, 27th minutes have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? I make the motion to approve the minutes. We have a first by Mr. Newton and a second by Mr. Locker. <coughs> All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Those minutes of April 27th pass unanimously. We don't have any old business, and we have three items in new business. <coughs> and the first item of new business is request consideration of a of construction contract for compressed natural gas CNG maintenance facility at the Public Works Complex. Ms. McEwen. Uh, Mayor of City Council, uh, this item here before you is regarding our transit fleet and the ability to work on the CNG, the compressed natural gas buses that we have. We currently have two, and we have two more that uh, we have ordered and are expecting delivery uh, in the next few months. Uh, so this, this item, though, is about the proper maintenance of the CNG uh, preventative maintenance within the facility. And it's, it's a grant that we have received through our uh, funding. And I'm going to ask Keith Scott, our director of our electric uh, um, transit, to come up and present this item for you. Mr. Scott. Thank you, David. Mayor, City Council, good afternoon. Um, yep, this is for a uh, recommended approval of construction contact, uh, contract with Palmetto Group, who was the low bidder uh, for this project. Um, we will be enclosing two of the open air bays at the public work complex to be able to do uh, not only just minor work on our buses that are CNG, but also uh, major work if we ever have to do that. Uh, then the facility will be. Uh, taken care of as far as any of the compressed natural gas, any of the gas release, any of those types of things, it'll, it'll be uh, set up to be able to uh, take care of the buses uh, with those gases being in there. <coughs> the ventilation system and the methane detection will all be included in that. So that contract uh, <coughs> that we are requesting that uh, you approve is to Palmetto Group, who was the low bidder. For two hundred ninety thousand six hundred and eighty-one dollars. 
Thank you, Keith. And I'll open up for discussion, comments. Question. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, go ahead. I'll go to you, Rick, after that. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Scott for applying for these funds because, as we see, this is all grant funds and there's no money coming out of the city coffers uh, to make this happen. But the only question I would have, I know we've talked for, for a long time about um, redoing our uh, public works facility complex and just curious, even though these are grant funds and it's $290,000, I would hate to, for us to spend $290,000 and then wind up you know, three or four years down the road having to take it out and do it somewhere else um, if we reconfigure or redo our public works complex. So I just wanted to see or, or ask the question, do we have a, any idea what a new public works complex would look like and does this open air facility, these bays, would it fit into where <coughs> new space would going to be or the new upfit of the public works facility would be? So. Um, uh, just don't know if we have those answers yet. Yeah. So, <clears throat> a couple of things. As we talked about our, our future capital planning at uh, our council retreat, uh, we, we are more than, than three, four years out to, of having an actual facility, uh, to having a built facility on this. So, uh, this is an immediate need we have now for the maintenance of, of these buses so that it provides a safe environment for the mechanics. And so, it, it is something that we highly and we move forward with at this time with the unknown of um, exactly when we'll have a, a facility, but knowing that from our retreat and the planning of that, um, that we, it's, it's more than four years out of on that. And, it's, and some of that, I understand uh, Mr. Scott can answer some of those questions as well. Some of it, if it can be, we may keep some of the, the say, say it stayed there, the facility. Um, you know, you can certainly just keep it there um, and keep the building there. Uh, but there may be an opportunity that we, we've looked at too, keeping some fleet there, but maybe an office and some other aspects of the public works um, at, a, at another location. All that's just kind of up in the air uh, before we get into design. But uh, Mr. Scott, I know you got some information about how um, that some of that equipment can actually be, be moved. Do you want to answer that for me? Yeah, I think a lot of the uh, installation of the equipment that we're going to have in there, uh, that was part of our conversation in the, in the beginning of it was to make sure that we'd be able to take it out and move it. If we did move it to another facility, um, then we'd be able to take it out and, and install it. So we wouldn't have to buy the equipment all over again. Appreciate it. Ms. Lockridge. Um, well, you have the, the press that on the spot there. Well, they have to prepare it. Will you still go out? On Caminera Road, we'll still fuel it uh, okay. at the uh, my natural gas facility. This is this is only just to be able to work on the buses. Okay, there won't be any fueling of them there. Mayor, Mr. Jeff uh, Roberts. So this is more than just enclosing with siding and two open bays. This is ventilation equipment and whatever else equipment. Yep. They, uh, ventilation equipment. Uh, they'll do uh, electrical. Uh, we'll have two bay doors that will be there. So uh, there'll be uh, a number of pieces of equipment, uh, you know, air compression. And that's what you're referring to as you could take with you? Correct. Uh, okay. Correct. Well, so you know, all right. Part of it will be the exhaust uh, handling system, you know, if we have the buses inside. And they'll be running while they're working on them or anything like that. We have a system that will hook to the exhaust so that all of it goes out and not back into the... So all of that will be able to be changed over to wherever, if we move it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Chapman? I just wanted to add a little bit more on to what Councilman Stewart was mentioning, because that was the first thing that I thought of, is that, you know, we've we've been kicking the can down the road a long time on the on the public works facility, um, and it's it was probably 20 years overdue. It's probably 20 years overdue, at least. And <clears throat> so that would be one of the main things I want to reiterate or stress, that we would need to really focus on trying to figure out what we can do to update the facility. And, and it may be that the, that the maintenance part just stays where it is. And the new, if we do a new facility, that it may be in a different location and that be, be for more vehicle, but the large equipment, it's still maintained at the facility that we're at now. Um, but I just, I just kind of want to make that point that, 
you know, I, I appreciate that we weren't able to maintain it ourselves because I'm sure it's pretty expensive to have it maintained by a, somebody else outside of our service. We're able to maintain them um, at our facility now. Uh, the difference is if we ever have to crack the gas system or if we have any disruption in the gas system on the bus, then that would be something that we can't do uh, where we are. And one last question, how many buses do we have that are... That are uh, we, have, we have two uh, right now, and we have two more on order that will be, one will be here in about two weeks, and the other one will be here at the end of September. Is the plan to convert all of them to natural gas? That's not my plan. Okay. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, if we were maybe a 60-40, or okay. I, I think uh, some of the routes that we run, uh, the diesel is... Uh, uh, good to do those. Okay. Uh, I think the compressed natural gas, being able to run it in more of our dense areas around town and things like that, and cleaning an air, cleaning our air, and being a little better that way, I think is where we want to be. <clears throat> okay. With that, I make a motion we accept it as proposed. Good points, and we'll take the motion and get a second. I hope. Thank from Mr. Harvin and still stay in discussion. Uh, Thomas. Uh, been reading about the social distance in the buses. And are you doing okay with that? And with these two extra buses that you're ordering, how about with being able to accommodate the passengers and, of course, still keep social distance? Well, we're certainly doing everything that we can uh, from the transit side. Um, we've limited the number of people that have been able to get on our buses uh, lately. Um, but with everything kind of opening back up, uh, there are more people starting to come out and wanting to ride and and those kind of things a little more. Uh, we are continuing to um, caution tape off directly behind the drivers uh, so that it does give that five, six feet back behind the drivers before anybody can come off uh, or where they're sitting. Uh, but they do pass by the driver coming in. And we've got some things that we're looking at now to put in those positions to kind of help with that. But. Um, you know, the folks that get on the bus, they don't seem to mind the, the closeness. <laughs> so we wish that they would uh, be a little further apart, but uh, uh, they, they, seem to, they seem to get together and huddle in, in areas when they get on our bus. But uh, uh, we're doing everything we can to keep it. Uh, well, you're doing a good job. Are you sanitizing yes, everything in the bus? And so it's uh, safe for the ride. So thanks for the work you do. And we haven't heard of any sickness on any of our riders, and uh, we haven't had any drivers have any sickness. So I think we've done pretty well. Any other discussions? Keith, uh, the bidding was very close. Yes. Do we have a history at all with the group out of Gaston? Uh We do not. Um, we, uh, I did have four references that I called. Um, one uh, out of the Gaffney Board of Public Works uh, said that they were a very good company to work with and never had any problems with them. Um, uh, we had the Rogers Group out of Nashville, Tennessee that did the Top Golf Project over in Greenville that they partnered with. Had nothing but good things to say. So all the references, uh, they either have current or past projects going with them. And uh, with the Gaffney... Board of Public Works, they have an ongoing contract with them. So um, all of them have said that they wouldn't have any problem hiring them to do anything for them. So. With this, with the, I guess my last question would be, with four of these buses in the fleet, are we the biggest user in our area, transit area, compressed natural gas? We're the only ones in the state. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yep. All right. No further questions. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Our next two items, uh, we'll handle them as two items, and they're both um, connected and all will be passed to the Planning Commission and come back to us for further discussion. But this kicks off the, 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 the public process. This, the first one is request consideration of a referral to the Planning Commission, a petition to annex and zone to PDD Plan Development District, approximately 25 acres located at 
1309 O. Williamston Road and to rezone an adjacent 8.2 mile, 8.29 acre parcel from R10 multifamily residential to the PDD, the plan development district. Ms. McEwen. Uh, Mayor and Council, as, as you stated, these two items, uh, they're identified as part of our strategic growth of the city. Um, they're right outside the boundaries of the city right now. Um, and if you look at a map, there's a map attached to it on this, this first item, you, you can see, and we've, we've discussed this area. Uh, the developer on this one is ready to move forward, and then the second item as well is, is already underway, and uh, they all are contiguous to each other. Uh, Mr. Maurice McKenzie of Planning and Development will go to specifics. Mr. McKenzie. Thank you. Thank you. As the mayor mentioned, this is a referral to the Planning Commission, so this will go to the Planning Commission on June 2nd, and then we'll come back to you on June the 8th. But again, this is to annex two parcels of land and zone it to PDD, Plan Development District. And as you can see on the map, there's another piece of property that's already inside the city. Proposed to rezone that as well to PDD Plan Development District. It is broken down into three parcels, as you can see, but it's really considered to be one development. And just to give you a brief description of what is proposed, as you can see on the map where it says College Park on the far right, that would be considered Tract A. That's 7.59 acres. The proposal is to construct single family residential dwellings on that parcel. Tract B, that's the one that's already inside the city. That's the middle piece. This shaded in brown. That's where College Park townhomes are located. That's a multifamily development that's been in progress for several years and it is proposed to continue that same development pattern multifamily on that track. And the track on the far left, track C, that's the largest one at 16.4 acres. And the proposal is to construct single family residential dwellings. But is there intent in the PDD document to make that flexible, market conditions change, they may look at more of a mixed use with single family or multifamily townhouses. But again, that will be addressed in the plan development district document that will be for all three parcels. That is currently being um, written now and finalized and that will be available for planning commission and for you when it comes back to you. Again, the PDD document is essentially the zoning for that particular development still so have specifics in there. But again, this is a referral to the Planning Commission and they meet on June 2nd. Any questions? Now, what is the uh, Willow Bend? We'll talk about next. That's the okay. next piece. Okay. Uh, question. You know, recently we had a discussion on uh, uh, rezoning off of Bleckley Street and we had issues with density and ingress, egress, and those setbacks and sidewalks and all those sort of things. Where in the process will those issues be um, addressed? Yeah, those will be addressed in the PDD document, and that will be presented to you, but it will have specifics regarding number of lots, type of development, setbacks, things like that. And uh, you're right. Uh, when we went through that process with the piece of property at the corner of Bleckley and Glenwood, you know, we had those concerns, and we passed those concerns along to the developer. So they're fully aware of the fact that you know, we want to have you know, certain characteristics built into this development as it moves forward. So those will ultimately come back before us. Absolutely, yes. The PDD document, you will see it. And again, that will be the zoning for this particular piece of property. So you will be able to see exactly what their development plan will be. And they'll have everything with detail from setbacks to type of units, density, and things like that. Good. Anything else, guys? I'll make a motion we refer it to the Planning Commission. Second. I have a first by the member of Tim, second by Mr. John Roberts. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? That request passes unanimously. Our last item of business is request consideration of a referral to the Planning Commission, a petition to Annex and zone to RM10 multifamily residential, approximately 11 acres located at Old Williamson Road in Nicholas Drive. <laughs> Ms. McEwen? I'm still here. So, uh, are you still there? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, and Councilman Stewart, this is in reference to the piece of property you just mentioned. On that same map, as you can see on the right side, 
highlighted in blue. It says Willow Bend. This is the piece of property that we're talking about now. But again, as the mayor mentioned, this is a referral to the Planning Commission, same as before, to annex and zone to RM10 multifamily residential. Um, this property, 11 acres on Old Williamston Road. And, um, pursuant to the previously recorded water and sewer service agreement and restrictive covenant that was signed by the previous property owner, we're requesting to move forward with annexation. Uh, once we annex the piece of property we just talked about, it'll be contiguous to this particular piece of property. So it's a domino effect. So we're pursuing the annexation of this particular piece of property. If you've been out there, you can see that this development is currently uh, under construction. It's uh, been approved by Anderson County. So we will move forward with uh, applying the RM10 zoning, which is very similar to their zoning, and they can continue the development as previously approved. It's a townhouse development. I believe there's about 66 that will be ultimately constructed in this particular development. We have been in conversations and had a meeting with the developer, and those conversations have been very positive to this point. So again, we recommend to refer this to the Planning Commission, and again, this will go to them on June 2nd, and we'll come back to you on June the 8th. Thank you, Maurice. Questions, comments? Ms. Lockridge. Uh, if you look at that, the map, um, and you look at pull up, pull up in, and you look, there's a little house or something in the middle that doesn't look like it's anything. Yes, that is a piece of property that appears to have been subdivided from this Willow Bend property years ago. It's outside the city. It's a little island. It's a little island, yes. And we don't have a restrictive covenant or anything like that. And if they chose to annex, and we could certainly ask them if they're interested, we, you know, they would have to come from them. They would have to request it. But yeah, it's a single family piece of property. And from the way it looks, it looks like it was cut out from that a few years ago. Very good. Good catch. Sure. Didn't notice that, Mr. Harbin. Um, Mr. McKenzie, before you get to the, I guess, track A, do we have uh, agreements, water sewer agreements with the other properties right here that are also, I assume, not in the city? On the front end there? Yes. Yeah, the only agreements, sewer service agreements we have are for these in this general area. So the other ones that you see that may be outside the city, we do not have those. I assume those, I guess it's one, two, three, probably those 10 pieces of property going out on Williamson Road on the left would be, we don't have any water sewer agreements. Right, where you see, where's this travel road and all that in that area? No, sir. Okay. Yeah. Who provides sewer out there? Uh, I believe we do. But again, they, was, they were tapped on well before the restrictive covenants were ever required. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Chapman. Just to tag on to what, uh, what was just mentioned about Wendell Bend. Um, the, so I assume that we have to, we have to ensure that track A is, is in is accepted before uh, Willow Bend can be to make it continue. That's right, and to be specific, on the council agenda, planning commission agenda, yeah, the first one will come first, and then this will come afterwards. So that way, once you approve it on second reading, we can approve Willow Bend on second reading. Mr. Roberts, Jeff Roberts. This just really popped into my head, but um, bonds or the road bonds, they will be transferred to city? You will, yeah, we'll work out all those details with engineering and building permits, everything from inspections, business licenses, everything will be. And we will most likely transfer any bonds that are in place for that to the city, and then we maintain that to make sure they stay valid. But we will be accepting this already as is through the county's process. Right. And Unfortunately, the city and county inspection and the way we look at roads and make public streets, they're very similar. But our engineers will work with the county engineers to uh, review what they've inspected thus far. And again, the road does not, doesn't have the final top coat and things like that. So we will continue that inspection process. And then ultimately, after a year, once it's complete, we will accept it to the system. Good questions. Anything else, guys? Mr. Riddick, in the 
have a city limit physically. Ma'am? That's going to really extend our city limit. Absolutely. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's well within our area of service. As you can see just beyond it, uh, there is a development of townhouses, apartments just beyond it. So we already go in that area. So this actually fills in a little gap. <clears throat> but yes, it's a nice addition. Absolutely. I recommend approval of the first by Ms. Harmon. Second by Dr. Thompson. Any further discussion? How does um, the planning commission meet first? It will be, first, it'll be our first public meeting. Yes. First public meeting. And I would imagine that we would get the package on our normal day on that Thursday, right? Thursday. Yes, sir. That's the plan. All the documents and <clears throat> have the ability to look all of this up before the June 8th meeting. Great. All those in favor, sir? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. So, having no other business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. First, I'd like to echo one comment, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we should all know we are all grateful, and I hope our residents and uh, businesses, etc. I really want to thank everyone sitting right here. Administration, y'all, y'all really done a heck of a job keeping us updated. Uh, we get daily updates via email, we get phone calls, texts, whatever we need. Um, thankful to have uh, this team in place. Y'all are great. And I just I hope our general public knows that. I really want to thank you. You've done a great job. I had a first by Frank Pro Tem, uh, J John, Sorry. Mr. Lockridge. John. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs> I think we'll segue into our budget workshop.